house tonight. And uh, I do appreciate the good singing and uh, appreciate the good spirit of the Lord that I can feel in my heart. And uh, I'm glad that makes me feel right at home when I feel His presence. And uh, it is good to see you tonight. It is a joy and uh, my honor to be able to preach. I appreciate Brother Brandon uh, for asking us to come. And uh, we want to be a help and a blessing to you this evening. And I uh, trust you have the Word of God with you tonight. The book of Matthew chapter number 16, Matthew chapter number 16, for a, a little while tonight, I'll be mindful uh, of Brother Hunt and uh, try not to take any more time than it is necessary, but I do want to be obedient to the Lord tonight, and uh, I believe the Lord has touched my heart for this hour with these verses of Scripture. Matthew chapter number 16, let's stand to our feet if you would please as we read the Word of God tonight and honor it. Very familiar passage of Scripture, Matthew 16. We want to start reading in verse number 21 and read down through the remainder of that chapter and into chapter number 17. Matthew chapter number 16 and verse number 21, the Bible said, And from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. He turned and said unto him, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. Thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? He shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Then in chapter number 17, verse number 1, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain and apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Let us pray. Our Father, as we bow this evening and call on your name, Lord, I do thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be in your house this evening, Lord. And I thank you for the good songs, God, that have been sung, Lord, uh, that have set uh, the service right for the preaching of your word. And I pray this evening, God, that you'd get honor and glory unto yourself tonight. Uh, I pray, God, that you'd help us to magnify you, Lord. Uh, God, it's already said, Lord, that we must decrease, but Lord, uh, we want you to be increased here in our midst tonight. Uh, I pray, O oh Lord, that you'd make yourself big in our presence tonight. Uh, I pray you'd help us to see you holy, high, and lifted up, God. Uh, I pray, Lord, that uh, you'd hide me behind uh, uh, the cross. Lord, may these dear people not to see or hear from me, but Lord, may we hear from heaven tonight. God, I'm nothing. I'm a nobody, Lord, but you're everything. Lord, you'll do what we'll not be able to do here tonight in this place. I pray that you'd work and move in a mighty and in a special way. We love you and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this evening. In these verses, the Bible has uh, tells to tells us that uh, the Lord is telling His disciples that He is about to be crucified. He's uh, uh, things are about to change dramatically in their lives, uh, and it's interesting to me what Peter said when the Lord uh, rebuked or when the Lord uh, told him this. Verse number twenty one uh, or twenty two. The Bible said, "Then Peter uh, took him and began to rebuke him." Uh, Peter didn't like the talk that the Lord was talking. Uh, he didn't want to hear about the Lord dying or about the Lord uh, going and bleeding and suffering. Uh, 
uh, and uh, he takes him, the Bible says, and uh, begins to rebuke him. Uh, uh, he, who does he think he is? Uh, by laying hands on the Lord uh, and rebuking him. And I can identify with Peter in that sense. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Uh, well, I've tried to do that a few times. The Lord has told me some things that maybe uh, I didn't like and I didn't really want to go along with it. Uh, then I, I wanted to take hold of the Lord foolishly uh, and uh, I wanted to go against His will. Uh, but to, in the end, I found out that His will's always right. Uh, His will's a lot better than mine. Uh, he knows the beginning of a thing from an ending of a thing. Uh, uh, he's in control a lot more so uh, than I am. Uh, if you'll notice in the context of these verses, uh, uh, the Lord turns and He tells Peter, uh, uh, He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, the Lord calls him a devil. He said, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, you're not thinking about spiritual things. Uh, and again, I can identify with that. Uh, uh, you're a, a carnal man, Peter. Uh, uh, you're savoring the things of man rather uh, than the things of God. Uh, uh, the Lord rebukes him and gets on to him, basically. Uh, he tells him he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, uh, and uh, he says, you're out of place, Peter. Uh, uh, and he puts him uh, back in his place time after after time, uh, the Lord has had to do that for me. Uh, he's had to remind me where I belong. Uh, he's had to show me my spot. Uh, he's had to take me back to that place uh, and humble me uh, and remind me that I really don't know uh, what I'm doing. Uh, uh, but He's in control of this situation. Uh, and uh, He's got everything running uh, as He sees fit. Verse, verse number 22, Then Peter took him. But then chapter 17, verse number 1, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter. <laughs> verse, verse 22, Peter took him. In chapter 17, verse 1, then the Lord, He took Peter. The Lord that took Peter. Peter took the Lord uh, and the Lord rebuked him and got on to him real good. Uh, uh, but less than five, six verses later, uh, then the Lord took Peter. Uh, uh, then the Lord, even though He got on to him, uh, even though He rebuked him, uh, even though He scourged him, uh, thank God He didn't hold it against him. Uh, he took him. Uh, he took Peter. Uh, aren't you glad God is a God uh, of second chances? Uh, aren't you glad He's a God that loves us? Uh, I can identify with Peter. Oh, I've seen him. I've taken hold of him. But at the same time, I've seen him take hold of me, wrap me in his arms, love on me, and say, it's all right, I still love you. I had to rebuke you. I had to deal with you. But I still love you. I'm glad he's that kind of God. I'm glad he is long-suffering to us, Lord. I'm glad that he uh, uh, forgives uh, and he forgets. Peter uh, uh, took Jesus, but then uh, Jesus took Peter. Yeah. He took him up on a mount apart yeah. and uh, began to be transfigured before them. Verse number two says. And uh, I want to preach for a, a little while tonight on this thought. Why Christ showed His glory to His disciples? Why, why is it that Christ showed Himself as He really is unto His disciples? And I, I wonder a lot of times why in the world would the Lord see fit to show us His glory? I, I know I'm not worthy of it. I know it's but not because I deserve it or that I've earned or merited it in any way. Uh, uh, but I assure you, uh, when He does show us His glory, uh, He's got a reason in mind. Uh, He's got a purpose in mind. Uh, and it's not just so you can run the pews uh, and shout and holler, uh, hey, I'm all for it. Uh, I'll join in with you and help you. Uh, but understand me, friend, uh, uh, when His glory 
he's on display. He's wanting to show us something. He's wanting to teach us something. And we do well to get the lesson that he's trying to impart unto us. Why? Why is it that he sees fit to, to visit? And y'all do know what I'm talking about, about the glory. There are times when he just shows up. And that he just gets bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, I believe got this way yesterday morning, what I saw on that video. Uh, uh, he got pretty big around here yesterday morning. Uh, uh, and that uh, he wants to be big in our lives. Uh, and when that happens, he does it uh, for a reason. Not just to make us run, shout, and holler, and jump the pews. Understand, he's showing us something. And he's taking these disciples upon the man of transfiguration. And he is teaching them and showing them some things that they need in this hour that they're living. I see he showed his disciples his glory, first of all, because he knew that they were going to face hell. He knew that they were about to face hell. And as you begin to look in these disciples' lives and in these verses that we read them to you, uh, the Lord, He begins to talk about suffering. Uh, he begins to talk about denying yourself uh, and about taking up crosses uh, uh, and about doing away with that fleshly uh, uh, appetite that we have uh, uh, and about uh, uh, laying down and losing uh, life. And that's contrary to what they think and that's contrary to what uh, uh, this TBN crowd tells you. They say it's going to be health and wealth. And uh, you, if you're uh, not uh, running over in your bank account, well, there's something wrong. You're not living right. I'm telling you, the Lord said that you're going to have to deny yourself, uh, take up your cross and follow after Him. Uh, uh, there's going to be afflictions. Uh, there's going to be sorrows. Uh, there's going to be heartaches that you're going to have to endure. Uh, and friend, He knew uh, that His disciples were about to face hell. Uh, every one of them, St. John, uh, uh, died a martyr's death. Uh, uh, in their ministry, they were going to be belittled. Uh, they were going to be made fun of. Uh, and the Lord understood uh, and knew that. Uh, uh, so He showed them uh, His glory. Amen. You understand me, friend, we're no different than those disciples. 2015, about to be 16, we're, we're a facing hell on every side. By the way, chapter 17, the first thing that they faced when they come down off of that mountain was a demon-possessed child. We're living in a demon-possessed society. In a demon possessed day, uh, young folks, I, I pray for you. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I would to God that I could uh, do more for you. Uh, you're facing things that I never dreamed of uh, when I was your age. Uh, you're uh, facing hell. Uh, you're uh, facing devils. Uh, you're facing seducing spirits uh, uh, that are running rampant in our day. Uh, we live in a society where there's good witches uh, and where it's all right uh, uh, to dabble around uh, in the, the occult world. Uh, hey friend, we're living uh, in a demon possessed day. They're facing hell. We're facing hell in the day that we're living as well. He knew that. Therefore, he showed them a glimpse of heaven. By the way, just a little bit of heaven It'll get you through a whole lot of hell down there. <laughs> Just a little bit of His glory, uh, it'll help get you through all the hell that you're going to have to face uh, in this life. Uh, understand me, uh, it ain't going to get better, church. Uh, it's going to get worse. Evil men and seducers are uh, waxing worse and worse every day. Uh, uh, but thank God we're going to a better place. Uh, I'm glad I've got my eyes fixed on a better prize uh, and a better place one day after a while. He showed them His glory because He knew they were going to face hell. He showed them His glory so that He might give them a foretaste of heaven. What the Bible says in verse number 2, the Bible says, and He was 
transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. Uh, Mark said that he was whiter than any fuller soap could dye. Uh, Luke said his uh, glistening, his countenance was altered, uh, and his raiment was changed. Uh, uh, he was transfigured uh, right before their eyes. That little word transfigured. We get our word metamorphosis from it. And you preachers probably know this. Basically what that means is this. What's on the inside comes out of it to the outside. What, what was on the inside of the Lord just showed up on the outside. He was transfigured. It's that, that little phrase transfigured, it's a prefix word that, that phrase trans. One commentator said it means this. It means a cross to the other side. Trans. Transfigure. A cross to the other side. Figure. Body. They saw on the Mount of Transfiguration His uh, across the other side. Body. <laughs> they saw there in this day what He is like tonight. As He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's a uh, transfigured by the way one day uh, I'm going to be transfigured. Uh, one day I'm going to be changed. Uh, uh, oh, as we born the image uh, of the earthly, we'll also bear the image uh, of the heavenly. Uh, uh, John said uh, we don't know exactly what he's going to be, uh, but I do know that when I see him, uh, I'm going to be just like him. Uh, hey, hey uh, uh, we're going to be changed. Uh, we're going to be made like him one day. Uh, of uh, this body of flesh uh, is going back to the ground. Uh, but hallelujah, there'll be a new body given. Uh, there'll be a glorified body uh, given to the child of God. Uh, we're going one day uh, and a glory for Him. Cross, across the other side, transfigured. <laughs> it's a... Uh, there's just a few of those trans words in your Bible. Not, not very many of them. The last thing you'll find over in Revelation 22, it talks about transparent glass. What we're going to walk on the streets of gold. He likens them to that. <laughs> and, and I know, and I don't want to confuse anybody, I know the rapture, the word rapture is not in the Bible. But there is a word for rapture in the Bible. It's one of those trans words. Translated. Enoch, the Bible tells us, was translated, Hebrews chapter number 11, that he should not see death. But before his translation, he had this testimony that it pleased God. He was translated that he should not see death. He was carried across the other side. We think about translating. A, we think about translating a language. And a, a friend of mine's a missionary in the Albanian right now. He's a, translating the King James Bible into the Albanian language to help a, those people have a, a Bible. A, that is a, one definition of a, the word translate. But also, a, it has to do with. A, Lands. And it has to do with land lords. Here's basically what it means. It means this, to, to pick something up in one land. Take it and change it so it'll set down and so that it will fit in another land. It can't go. It can't go from here to here. It's got to be changed. Picked up. Changed. Set down in another land. One day He's going to pick us up. 
He's going to change our vile bodies. Uh, and He's going to set us down. We don't fit in down here. Uh, we don't fit in in this world. Uh, but He's going to set us down in a world uh, where we belong. Uh, he's going to put us in a world uh, where we fit in. Uh, hallelujah. I'm glad one day uh, I will be translated. Uh, I will be changed. It has to do with lands taking taking land away from one landlord and translating it over to a, another landlord. By the way, you do know when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, He not only died for a people, uh, but He also died for a planet. He's got the title deed to this planet. And one day, uh, uh, one day it's going to change hands right now. Uh, he's temporarily leased it out uh, to a little G-O-D of this world. Uh, but thank God one day uh, that title deed of this planet uh, going back to the rightful hands uh, in which it belongs. Uh, our Lord and our Savior. <laughs> Amen. Has to do with land. Landlords and has to do with languages. Pick up a language in this land, change it so it'll fit in another land. In this land, in this, in this world, we say things like cancer. In this land, we say, we say words like suffering, sorrow, miscarriage, pain, agony. Oh, but over there, there's a brand new language. <laughs> There's another language in that land. <laughs> and over there we say words like love, like peace, like joy, uh, like worthy, worthy, worthy. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank God this language that we've learned in this world, uh, it will not carry over uh, to that world where we're going one day. Oh, He wanted them to foretaste heaven. He wanted them to understand that it really was worth all they were going through. Therefore, He showed them His glory. He showed them His glory. He wanted them to find their hero. What the Bible says in these verses. Verse number 3, And behold, there appeared unto Moses and Elijah talking unto him. Moses and Elijah there on the Mount Peter, James, and John. Moses and Elijah, type of the law. And Elijah's type of the prophets that are there. Peter had just been given the keys to the kingdom. He's there. But if you'll notice on down in verse number 5, while he yet spake, a bright cloud overshadowed them, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. God was pleased with what was taking place there. Verse uh, number 8. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Moses and Elijah, they went away. The voice of the Father went away. But Jesus, He was there. He was still there. He wanted them to find their hero. He, he wanted them to see that to, uh, the glory will leave. And would to God we could live in the glory all the time. But you can take off your halo because I know you don't live in it all the time. When all the glory went away, Jesus was still there. He was still there. In the first part of this chapter, He's standing between two worlds. He's mediating between God and man. But look in the last part of this chapter. Taxes have come to you. And Peter begins to question what is he going to do? And he tells him, go down and catch a fish and you'll pay the taxes. Can I say, friend, He's able to handle the big things in your life as well as the little things. He's able to handle salvation completely. You don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is just believe it and accept it by grace through faith. 
at the same time, He's able to walk with you down to the mailbox and pay your bills, friend. He's able to stretch that bank account out and make it go further when it shouldn't. Uh, He's able to meet needs. Uh, He's able to handle the big things uh, as well as the little things in your life uh, and mine. Uh, He's able to stand between heaven and earth. Uh, uh, He's that big. Uh, He's small enough to get in the car uh, and ride to the house of God with you, friend. Uh, Hey, He'll be there. Uh, When you need Him, you can call on Him. He's God. He wanted them to find their hero. Oh, stop looking at what religion can do for you. Stop looking to what the law or the prophets can do for you and just go to looking to Him. He's the only one that's matters. He's the important one. Why? He showed them His glory. He wanted them to find their hero. He gave them a foretaste of heaven and he knew they were going to be a face in hell. I'm closing with this. He wanted them to fathom him. He wanted them to go deeper with them. You see, up to this time, they had saw the Lord Jesus as a rabbi, as a teacher, as a master. They've seen him do miracles. Now they've seen Him in a different way. Now they've seen Him as He really is. They know He's more than a preacher, than a good man, than a, than a prophet. They know He is the Lord. He wanted them to go deeper with Him. Therefore He displayed, He showed them His glory. Understand me friend, there is a higher height. And there is a deeper depth than you can go than just wading around in the shallow end of the water. And Paul talks about it over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 uh, about the deep things of God that He wants to impart unto us, friend. That, uh, that he, he wanted them to, to fathom Him, to go further with Him. And these disciples, they're about to, to leave out, uh, out of the upper room And they're going to go out and they're going to turn the world upside down. And they did it without planes, trains, automobiles, telephones, uh, radio, satellite TV, uh, or any of that. They did it because of what they got on that Mount of Transfiguration. The Lord put something in their heart there that day that they never got over. Now friend, understand me. If we as a church are going to make any difference today, we're going to have to fathom Him. We're going to have to go deeper with Him. We've sat back too long and we've let everything steal our joy, steal our victory, steal our peace that we have with God. Listen church, we're more than a conqueror through the Lord Jesus. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Victories have already been won. Don't be defeated. Amen. You just need to go further with Him. Hallelujah. Preacher, I'm done. You come tonight. Father, I thank You for liberty. Thank You for allowing us to stand this evening. I pray You'd bless Your man. Have Your way in hearts and in lives this evening. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.